What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Coco Brown, hanging out with your boy, Craze. We on the Coca and Craze show. We are back for another episode of this uh, thought-provoking yet. We're going to keep it real, real, real. You know what I'm saying? You got the beauty and the beast, baby. What's up? <laughs> Yeah, mother decided to dye her hair, honey. She's doing a little something different, honey. It's been a long day. Mother's tired. How are you doing today, bruh? I'm chilling. I'm yeah, chilling. you good? You good? Yeah, yeah, you, all my you're always so fly, and I'm just comfortable. You know what I'm saying? I just scream, single mother, you ain't here looking like the dude that I'm trying to catfish. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just trying to get you to give me a couple of dollars. <laughs> What's going on, man? Wait, wait, wait. I'm, what I'm is, saying I'm trying to open up the conversation here. <laughs> don't choke, don't choke, dude. Start? Why are you choking? I'm just saying. <laughs> Why you ain't got to start? Because you in here, you look, because you in here with this little outfit looking like, you know, you about to leave here and go to the club and I'm going to bed. Yes, I said it. Because I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not leaving going to the club, though. I'm mm-hmm. even going home. You going I'm home? Chill, dressed all over, go home. Okay. Yeah. I love it. That's, that's good. dressed thing. to go to bed. Uh, you do? That's my new thing. That's your new thing? That's the old thing. Like, that's why I'm enjoying the old age. You get dressed Ooh, you ain't bed. even 40 yet talking about old age. You kill me. Well, Are you still going to be dressing like this I've at 50? Been outside. I've been outside since I was 16. So that didn't... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. About 22 years. Right. I got you beat. I've been outside since I was 17. Yeah, so I'm old. Bruh. I get dressed to go to Are bed. Are you getting an AARP magazine? I Do you have to worry about I'm a things black man. like prostate cancer yet? No. <laughs> I'm, a yeah. I'm a black man and I'm about to see 40. Shit, I should be getting it. I'm running for president. That's what I came to know. You can't, you running for president? Yeah, I'm running for president oh in 2028. God. Fix it, Lord. You know what? Praise At this point, you know what? It's very possible. We, we've had a whole orange Muppet in office, so anything's possible. I'm giving, I'm giving you, I'm, you know giving, what I'm them, giving them time to get their shit together. I'm serious. I'm That's what you're going to do? Okay. All right. Crazy for president. Which my goes, whole which... cabinet going to be six sex niggas. Everybody. Oh, God. Everybody. They've already got One my secretary of defense. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to bleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like I said we can't even get 60 seconds in. My bad. Yeah, he ain't got it. What's gonna be your platform? What you standing for? If you're gonna run, what you standing for? I'm saving. Nah, I ain't gonna say that. I don't want to start no trouble going to the second episode. What? I was gonna say something crazy. I don't want to start no trouble. It's only our second episode. What was you about to say? Please don't tell me you were going to talk about them people. Not directly. No, please don't do that. I, I would like to have a fan base. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what? This well, the what... platform I am going to run on is true equality for all people. Okay, great, great. That's a great answer. You know what I'm saying? And my campaign slogan is anybody could get these hands. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> The orange man could have said that if his hands were so Anybody could get these hands. That's it? Yeah. That's what you're going to say? That's, that's your gonna be out. That's going to change the American slogan all around the world. America, everybody could get these hands. Okay. Everybody can get these hands. Everybody okay. Get these hands. All I'm right. Serious, 2028. Okay. I, I, I can't wait to see this. Perfect. Am I going to be your campaign manager? Nah, but honestly, real talk. <laughs> nah, for real, for real. Hit. All right, now yeah. I'm gonna get the joke out, but I'm really thinking about what I really would like to see is mm. black people have their own party. I think mm. that I would think that if mm. we had a candidate, if I really were like into politics like that and really wanted to run, mm. I would run on the basis of starting our own black political party. And even if I lost, if I gained up enough to create our own political party that's separate from Democrats and Republicans, mm-hmm. I would run on an independent narrative of creating a party and representing just us. I would be a voice. Probably won't get far, but I would be the first candidate that would specifically talk for our people and hope that would create a party that gives us enough. Well, the way Don Lemon was ragging that dude the other day that ended up getting him fired, honey, he might be the first interview. <laughs> Because I'm going to tell you something. You know, I, I don't know if you watched the interview. Yeah, then, and 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 literally, when they were trying to talk to him, he said, I'm talking right now. I said, oh, my God, they're telling him to shut up. I knew it. I knew it. So and, you think that got him fired because he went off on old boy? 
Um, yes. And I think not because he went off, but because they were telling him to be quiet and they couldn't silence him. You know, they never want to be in a position when they cannot control the buck. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what it was. I mean, Don has always been controversial. He's always said what he believes. Um, from my encounters with Don, I've had the pleasure of hanging out with him, you know, and his partner. And that man does not hate women. That man, you know, is so cool, so down to earth, I so real. But he's, huh? What? All that he hate women shit. I well, think he the said one thing. He was making a point. Women don't like being read by gay men. Well, that, and then no woman likes to be called old. No woman wants to be called old, even if we are old. Now, you, now I will say this. That is, that is more of a white woman thing. Because people wonder, you know, people ask me all the time, Coco, do you fear getting older in this business? No. Because I'm probably going to work more when I'm mm. older. When you look at the Red Divine and Jennifer Lewis and Cheryl Lee Routh, these women are, according to Dawn, past their prime. But as black women, our prime is what? our 40s, our 50s, our 60s. Black don't crack. We look great. We're taking better care of ourselves. You got women out here that are running circles around young women that are well past 45. Damn good, could still get that work. That's what I'm saying. Like, let's keep it real. Shirley Ralph looks amazing. She can get that work. Oh, you know, oh God. Okay. Um, you know, Jennifer name, Lewis, Lord, Lord, Divine, Lord, you know, Lord, I mean, Lord. I'm going down the list. Lynn Whitfield. Lynn almost Whitfield. Almost had her. Almost had her. Please. Almost had Lynn Whitfield. I know her. Real oh, talk. Mm-hmm. I can tell the story. You want to hear the story? Oh, oh my God. God. Go Almost ahead. Had her. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, Jesus. Go ahead. Go look, ahead. Look, tell look. the story. Tell the story. Dick was, was this still the 1900? Fix no, it, Lord. Did he say the night? You know what? You know, no, we had horse think, and buggies I, and we didn't have electricity. Look, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, this wasn't the 1900s. I think we crossed over into the 2000s. Mm-hmm. I was going to a knee specialist in Manhattan. Okay. And she was at the knee specialist. Mm-hmm. She was in the elevator mm-hmm. together. We sat in the waiting room the whole time. She looked at me. I finally got the nerve to introduce myself, gave my name, gave her my number. At the time, it was Sprint blow up phone. Remember the blow up phone? You get yeah. it for three months and then it go off. Yeah. I gave her my number, got on the train. By the time I got off the train, Sprint phone was off. So I never know if she ever even would have called. Real story. Almost had Lynn Winfield. That was, <laughs> that was, almost had her. I love the delusional. The I almost had her. Grandeur. I love the delusions of Granger. I don't remember. We <clears> still <throat> get this work. Oh Lynn. God! Oh my God! Fix it, Jesus, Lynn. I do not. I'm sorry, girl. I know her, and I'm okay. <laughs> if you say so. Oh, she married. But no, 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 no. But I'm saying I know her. That's that's what's, Queen what's Lynn. the other one that she said? I think she said her name. Um, she what? Be, she be loud. She be doing all the dances. Jennifer be, Lewis. Oh yeah, she could definitely get that work. You read her book? Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, honestly, these are women that I look up to that I completely admire. But that's the one thing about black women. You know, the older we get, the more seasoned we get, we are better. White women age and, you know, they get phased out because they don't age well. And then the ones who try to fix their faces and look younger, they look crazy. They look snatched like their face hurt. You know, that's why sometimes I wonder, you know, now I keep it 100. I do get a little Botox. Yes, I do. I got some Botox today. <laughs> yes, chin is smooth. But putting like stuff in my face or like cutting on my face, I don't want to do that. Well, you can, know? Can, can you tell the Krugers that Cole and Belt they at least look like them when they attack me? Because I don't get attacked by the by the sexy Krugers when I get attacked. Krugers? <laughs> Did you call Krugers, them Krugers? Krugers, Panthers. Oh Lion, my God. tiger. I don't know what they are. But it's the same thing for me. It's like the sugar daddies that try to holler at me look like Grady from Sanford or something. Well, you, you know, can I get can older? I get the Calvin Lockhart? How, 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 how much older? Can I get the Billy D. Williams? What's, maybe. What, 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 what's the sugar daddy for you? I mean, a man, a, a man that's over sixty five. A man that's over sixty five. Man that's over sixty five. Look, nigga, they. Oh, well, I, have you seen the Silver Fox, Fox Squad? Squad? I was going to say, have you seen the Silver Fox By Squad? By the way, I'm coming for them niggas. I'm, that you have not a stitch of gray, Negro, and you're Beijing. I now. got one. How? You got you right, and you Beijing now. So no, you can't be part of the Silver Fox Squad. It's I'm not coming happening. for y'all niggas. I'm telling no, y'all. But I'm saying the Silver Fox Squad. If it, I give this shit like that, you. no, you girl, you hear me? Our producer, our lovely producer, <laughs> girl. I started the essence, and I was a straight groupie. 
I said, I will get I'm all these worms. Ready. All these worms, I honey. Telling, I don't need no I shots. Keep telling them. And I know a couple of them, honey. And they be like, hey, go. I'll be like, don't play with me. I will take these worms for the team. That's that's the sugar daddy I want. But I get the ones look like Greg from Sanford's son or Woodrow from Good Times. <laughs> I never get it. I never get it. I never, the dudes that holler at me, you know they got gout. You know they got ailments. They got a pill box at home. Their pills are the size of my pinky. Like, you know they got all kinds of ailments. And my thing is this. If I'm going to do an Anna Nicole Smith, and if you understand what that reference means, that means if I'm going to get an old man on the cusp of death, there is a check, and I mean a major check behind it. I will be in the gym. I'll walk around half naked. If you see me doing that with an old man, understand that bag is serious. Not but just to be walking around old, with Cletus, absolutely not. Absolutely. But why, but why can't I come up on the, on, on, on the chick from Titanic? Huh, Titanic? Yeah, I'm on a white chick like that. With the me. blue diamond? Yeah, I'm on a white You know what? I can't know. with you, brother. First of all, get out of Coles and Belk and roll through Neiman Marcus and Bloomingdale's. I be in there. And you talking about the old biddies in there? They don't never attack me in there. Because you they... probably walking around like you're going to rob it. Maybe if you didn't look like a thug and maybe put on a, maybe a suit or maybe something like you came from playing tennis or squash, maybe you'd get Edith. <laughs> in the meantime, you getting Gertrude and Mabel. I'm just saying, honey, it's all about appearance. You know what I'm saying? When I want to attract me an older man with some money, I go to the golf course, honey. Well, I'm not trying to. I'm just saying, I go and ride around that I'm cart like I'm looking for somebody, I'm like I'm lost. To, if I'm in cold, that means I'm, because I look at cold as like the bougie Walmart. Okay, and that's why you keep meeting the Gertrudes. Yeah, but I'll be just. That's why you get the Beulahs. I'll be in there trying to stick and move. Get because they be having like the good, the good blankets and all that stuff. Okay, so fine, long. but don't go in there trying to catfish and wear no sweatpants with the jogging pants with no drawers. If you want to catch, you know, I don't be trying to catch. If you, if you, but if you want, fell on look, a good cheek set, look, and they always bother me. Look, if you want to catch you a Lady Eloise, you're gonna have to carry your ass to Saks. Okay, you're not getting Lady Eloise, honey. You're not getting my gosh. You're not getting that in Coles or Belk. You got to go to Neiman's, Bloomingdale's, Saks, not the outlets, the actual store. And that. you need to go on a Saturday morning extremely early or catch them early when they in their little jogging suits walk in the mall. And then they go shopping and have tea up in the cafe at Neiman Marcus afterwards. See, brother, I, I got to give you some game, honey. Because, see, I'm going to be that helpful. Please believe it. Okay? I already got my Chanel yeah, kit deal picked out. I don't go out. there for that. I, don't look, I, I go there looking for sheep and stuff. And it never fails. No matter how many times I go there. Yeah. I always get Because of where you are. If I want to get a truck driver or a dude with a, an hourly job, I'm going to go hang out in Walmart. If I want to meet a dude that might have a 401k and drive a car that he don't owe $7,000 a month on it, I may go to Tarjay. But if I want to really step my game up, I'm hanging out in front of the polo store. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the polo outlet. I'm talking about the one where a jacket in there is $900. You got to you gotta put yourself in position to win. You're not See, I'm trying to give him game, y'all. How, how do I know this and he don't? Okay. Oh, nobody said I didn't Is know it. Done? I just said that when I'm moving around, yeah, I have a tendency to get attacked by older, unattractive white women. Well, That's who says she ain't got no money? Are you willing to take one for the team to get that bag? Yeah, look past the wrinkles and the, and the blemishes. <laughs> okay. Then let it go. But if you want to get that one that went down to Miami and got a little work done, got a little nip tuck. You know, she got the self tanner injections. You know what I'm saying? By the way, she I've never, with. ever slept with a woman outside my life. Good for you. No. That's a beautiful thing. I think I came close. You ain't never no. met you a bad Barbie that you might have wanted no, to tell. I had an Ecuadorian and Italian chick I met at the bra. Okay. Did you I go there with her? Yeah, I took her down, but she was Okay, hood. so that's not a black girl. That's outside your... Re- you know what? Nah, mm-hmm. she was hood. Fix it, Jesus. You know what? She was more Puerto Rican. I don't give a damn. She wasn't black. So you have slept outside your race, Negro. Nah, I don't count her. She was How? hood. Don't matter. You can have a bad barbie. She was barbie. brown skin. <sighs> brown like what? 
a tan brown or like melanin, melanin brown? She would brown. Does she like, get white in the winter? She she would brown like who who, who light skin? Who light skin but black? She was like Jasmine Guy Brown. Okay, so a mixed chick, but she did she have any black in her? I, I guess other so. than you. <laughs> Look, man. I'm trying to help. Him out. I'm trying to. He's just getting, he's going down the rabbit hole. I'm just trying to help Craze out the rabbit hole. No, so let's get this. She wasn't. I didn't consider her white because she didn't look white. She. I didn't even know that she was. Did she, she leave hairs behind? Nah, that because that is always the key. Like when a black woman leaves hairs behind, you don't know whether it's the top or the bottom. But a white girl's hair, you know, that is a non-black woman unless she got a unit on. And if her unit is shed, she don't have a good one. I'm just saying. I don't know. That was a long time ago. Long, long okay. Time ago. But let's get into this. So apparently, scientists are saying that oral sex is leading to ex- extreme cases of throat cancer. Now, they didn't specify whether that's oral sex from, you know, cunnilingus or oral sex from fellatio. Now, for you those out there that don't know what that means, it doesn't know if you're getting it from eating or blowing. <laughs> but I think the majority of people going to just go ahead and take the risk. I don't think anybody's going to get freaked out enough to say, I ain't going to do it no more. Niggas is nasty, cuz. They are. And I, and I think our wonderful producer probably will shake her head at that. Dudes, I don't can't tell you the dudes that I, I've been at the gym for the last three hours and walk in. He's like, let me get that food. I am saucy right now. <laughs> and they want it. Or the ones who love to get you first thing in the morning, that's the worst. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't wear drawers when I sleep because I got to let her breathe. But there's chicks up here that keep her trapped. And then you want it. And that's been trapped. And just stewing, and you want it first thing in the morning? Dudes who meet chicks on the first night or even in the club and do it to her in the car in the parking lot, stuff like that. You don't know this woman. Who, did you see the thing that the girl said she gave the dude herpes because she gave the dude, she screwed the dude in the bathroom stall at the club, knowing she had a full blown outbreak and she let him hit it raw? She knowingly gave this dude herpes. Talking about she was don't drunk. Don't she go to jail? <clears throat> I don't know, but she yeah, admitted that's a crime. it. She admitted it. That she knew she had a full blown outbreak. She got that a little is drunk. That's illegal and that is a crime. And, she, and, and he videotaped him boning her in the stall of a bathroom at the club. And she, knowing she had a full blown outbreak, gave that man her purpose. No, so men are nasty though. See, Y'all out here in groceries. He, he Y'all didn't, nasty. He didn't, he didn't see the full blown outbreak. He don't know what a herpes outbreak looked like. That, you were drunk in a dark bathroom in a club. You think he inspected the vagina before he went there? Thank God I did all my dirt in the 1900s. Okay, the fact that he keeps saying 1900s, well, like, no, not 1900s. like we had horse and buggies and we was outside flying kites trying to get electricity. <laughs> By the way. We were slaves when he was coming. <laughs> he talked like we were slaves. The 1900s was a beautiful time. I understand, but when you say a 1900s, it's like, bruh, can you say late 90s, late 80s? When you no, say 1900s. We was in 1900s. I understand that, but it sounds crazy. Like we was drinking out of separate water fountains and you was out here being a man. <laughs> <laughs> it don't sound all right, bro. It don't. Okay, the I get it. The 1900s of 90s. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. All right, we're going to say the 1900s of 90s. Okay, got it. Okay. All right, yeah. But I'm saying, like, you right. Dudes is nasty because these men don't care. They, like, I don't know if men have forgot that, you know, AIDS is still out there. There's herpes. Syphilis has made a comeback, dude. Syphilis, that took out Al Capone. (laughs) I think, I think, I think, I think based on the sexual climate Mm -hmm. nowadays, you have to understand, like, they basically trying to completely erase gender. Mm -hmm. So you can't expect the level of acceptance that they have for what they want us mm-hmm. to accept, what they putting in cartoons and kids and all of that, mm-hmm. for it to be any type of anything plus respect when it comes to sexual dignity. I mean, if if I'm making any sense. 
Uh, okay, you know well, what? We'll get back. We'll to be that right back, break. y'all. We gonna try to make sense of what he just said. Yeah, we'll be back. Coke and craze. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your girl, comedian, actress, Coco Brown. I just got finished hanging out with my girl, Aisha Howard, on 11 Alive, promoting my Wigs of Love brunch on May 27th at the This Is It Cultural Event Center. Make sure you get your tickets. It's going to be a great event, honoring those women who are battling and winning against lupus every day. If you need any more information, please go to wigsoflove.org, get your tickets, get more information, and let's support a great cause together. We've got Tony Terry performing. We have Emerald Green, the poet. We are going to be doing it big, celebrating four nominees who are women that are winning, battling, and getting their lives back from lupus. Come on, get your tickets. All right, so we're back with the Coke and Craze show, and we're going to get into what Craze was trying to say before the break because I'm still scratching my head. Can you break it down? Break it All down, right. please. What I was trying to say mm-hmm. was that there's so much acceptance for everything nowadays. they basically trying to erase gender. They make everything cool. So what do you expect? You can't expect somebody to have some type of decency or respect about themselves. So now you're trying to introduce throat cancer. I mean, fuck, you've been sucking dick and eating pussy for years. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. I mean, honestly, we're at the point that people just don't care. You've got a whole uh, generation that is all about how shocking can you be? How crazy can you be? Can I go viral? What do I have to do to be seen? There's no level of boundaries or class or decorum anymore. We know that. It's like, you know, you got people out here celebrating the craziest crap ever. When you see certain people become famous, like the Cash Me Outside girl, she famous now. You know what I'm saying? The whole Kardashian clan, what are they famous for? Like, Mm -hmm. you, you realize we're at that point now that is whatever you can do to become viral, become popular. There are no boundaries, no pandemic, limits. They make the most profitable business was the OnlyFans account. Right, and it was all sex. Yeah. It was like, well, well, a few people tried to do something else, but OnlyFans, when you think of OnlyFans, the first thing your mind goes to is that, something sexual. And, but sex sells. Sex will, sex will forever yeah. sell. Sex yeah. will forever sell. So if mm-hmm. they think that's actually going to stop, no, anybody gonna stop doing cunnilingus and fellatio because they get throat cancer. They they hold back in their mind. It's like if I just gargle some listerine, it'll kill everything. <laughs> There's people out here that really believe that if they but, gargle but listerine they after they do it, it's based on a number of partners that you have. But the thing is, you got people out here sleeping with so everybody, they like, and nobody's being real six, truthful. Like what you said, what they said this morning: if you have more than six partners, so if you have more, everybody than, got more than six yeah, partners. Like they, so, so at that point, what you the got twenty two year olds with more than six parts. Yeah, like what I'm gonna stop for now? You telling me six? Well, shit. Well, I'm I'm good and to is dead. Anybody, let's get into it right quick. Do you think anybody ever ever really really, really reveals their actual body count? If I knew, I would. If you knew, if I knew, I would. Do you have a roundabout? Is there a roundabout number that you're willing to share? If you had to guesstimate the number of partners you've had, is there a roundabout number? Uh, I started getting action at what? Consistent action at about 14. I lost my virginity at 12, but I started getting consistent action about 14. So from 14 now, I would give me a good ballpark, about 180. That's give or take. That ding ling got a lot of miles on it. <laughs> I'm saying if you go from 14, Ooh, child, that's an 83 cutlass. <laughs> you talking about if you go from 14 to now? Ooh, yeah. And you and, and the reason why and the reason why if you being honest, you're getting, if you had to go down and write down every woman's name you've been with, could you do it? No. Yeah. Okay. No way. Most men can't. You know? No way. No wow. way. Because if you I and I know and I'm I'm being I'm saying 180 because. In my mind, I want to think it's 180, but I know it may be less. But it's been people, like, especially since social media. Like, I remember 2008 when Facebook mm-hmm. came out. Like, mm-hmm. when Facebook got hot, mm-hmm. I ain't going to lie. Every every little joint that I went to junior high school with and that didn't let me, I went back. I took all that there. I took well, care of all that. 
I went and got wow. all that retroactive work. Like, wow. Like, and. Wow. That wow. account, like, it was, it was bad. Yeah. It was, it was when yeah. we, like, I keep telling everybody, even when we get into how to communicate with this generation. I want to see the woman worry about how much of a body count. Because men, y'all really worry about us. You know. No, we don't. You don't think so? Every man want a hoe. Every man want a hoe. I wasn't even going to include him in the conversation. Eric, is that true? <laughs> we got a friend in the studio. I'm not, it, 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 no, but it, I'm saying this. Not, every man want a hoe. There's another man not, here. It's not. When you hear hoe, you think hoe in the sense that she... Well, men are wife and hoes at alarming rates no, right now. It's not that. It's not that men are wife and hoes. It's just that niggas just don't... If it's certain about a man that drop, like if I walk in a spot with a female, yeah, if I'm the only one in the spot that's checking for shorty, I don't want nothing to do with shorty. Mm. Since I've been in Atlanta mm. and I've learned, and and did maybe so the chick that's sitting at the bar by herself, keeping it classy, you don't want her because ain't no niggas hollering at her. But the chick that every dude is looking at, she walking by, damn, like she out there half naked, glitter, titties out, ass no, out. That's, that's not, who you want? No, see, that's what you think. But it's but you lot. just said if nobody's trying to no, holler at I her. Walk, it don't matter what my chick got on. My chick could walk in the spot with a sweatsuit on. As long Depends as, on what kind of sweatsuit. Yeah, though. but as long as- Is it Fashion Nova or it, Learners? But it don't. <laughs> but to me, but I don't know. I'm different. I'm different. I'm I look just at saying, it's a little does bit. Does it say different. juicy cross the ass, or does it say you know? Does it is, you know? Does it say something like you know? It's it's free or some shit. Like, I, can I be uh, sexy to me? Ain't what you got on. Sexy is how you carry yourself. Sexy okay. is if you could walk in a spot with whatever, looking mm. like you just went to Walmart, mm. looking that you just went to the grocery store and could be the sexiest. Thing okay, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you. This. I'm gonna take it back. I'm gonna take it back. Yeah. Okay, so when we first met. Mm -hmm. And and we met in Ikea. Mm -hmm. I was by the desk for my son. Mm -hmm. And you spoke to me. What made you speak to me? Was it because of who I was? Or was it something about the way I walked or talked or what? I wanna, I'm, I'm just curious. What made you go, I'm going to talk to her? I mean, it was because who you were and you weren't okay. on no bullshit. Okay, okay. So because it wasn't, of who I was you wasn't, and I was humble. Yeah, you wasn't on no, hmm. I'm, you was on some, look, I'm here to just get my shit and keep it moving. So I'm it was just me seeing that you wasn't on no bullshit, just saying, hey, how you doing? I'm a fan of your work. Like, right. that's it. Right. Because, right. like, at the time, I really watched the show. I was really watching the show. Like, I right. really was right. into the show. Right, that's what the show was really so, yeah. so it was like, it was the, hey, how you doing? I'm saying, now, if you were doing some shit, you had a bunch of people around, you had the school face on, you was moving like you didn't really want to be bothered, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say shit to you, man. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, do. Right, right, but you right. wasn't on that type of time. Right, right, you get right, what I'm saying? Right. You stop. Let you me ask you a question. I had a guy tell me one time that what turns him off is a woman that smiles at everybody. Yeah. Okay, break that down for me. Because Women need to understand what makes them a pressure gym to a man. Okay. What makes you a pressure gym to me, what makes me a pressure gym to me, besides the fact that these chick that family that y'all know so much about me. Got it. Right? So yeah. that means I'm entrusting you with my life. I'm yeah. entrusting you with anything happens to mm -hmm. me. I'm entrusting you with my kids' well-being. I'm entrusting you with so much. So therefore, I have to protect you because you have that information. Right. Okay. So if you go around smiling at any and everybody's face, that makes you susceptible to get that information to any and everybody, which puts oh. me at risk. So does that kind of go to the theory that men love bitches? Because I know that if you ain't woken, if if I could come to you and say, "Yo, coat, I bury a hundred thousand over here." Mm -hmm. And I know that you don't fuck with niggas like that. Mm. I could trust you with that. But if you want shorty to run around, everybody told you, hey, how you doing? I'm not coming to you with that information. Gotcha. Why would I? You smile on everybody's face. You wouldn't, anybody could get close mm. to you. Mm. you. So you don't like a too friendly chick? Yeah, nah, nobody don't want that. If, if she's a pressure gym now, she's just some random, you don't care about why the fuck. Like, yeah, nah, you don't care. But you want but your you woman to have kind gym, of like a mystery, a mystery, or a, just be kind of a wall to other people, like just be a little guarded or something where it's like she may be pleasant, 
but she's not skinning and grinning. Everybody. But that's not even your woman. That should be any woman. But I'm saying if you if you went into a room and you saw a chick just turning her nose up at everybody and like kind of like whatever to everybody, or you see the chick that's very pleasant, very sweet. Everybody's like you know talking to her. She's like you know smile. Hi, how you doing? Whatever. Who would you rather talk to? The chick that's dissing everybody and kind of like whatever, or the chick that's very friendly and uh, polite. The one who's walking the fine line between the two. Mm-hmm. That's the one I'm looking for. Okay. The one okay. who's selective about who she gives her time to yes. and how she gives her time to them. Got it. But how would you know that just seeing her? Got to observe. You got to, what I always tell you, if you ever walk in a room and you can't identify the mark, and you the mark. So you're supposed to be observing the room every time you, any room you walk in. Game. Game recognized so game. You can't, and that's why your attraction shouldn't be predicated off of look. Yeah. Everything with a fat ass and a pretty smile ain't good for you. True that. Every six foot, faux, dark skinned dude with a bald head is probably the devil. Mm. <laughs> Just saying. Mm-hmm. But, like, okay, so let's get into this. You know, um, I, I had a little epiphany over the weekend. Um, and I want to see how you feel about this. I met a couple, married couple. And um, this is something that I've been told my entire life from my mother, my grandmother. Um, oh, my, you know, older women in my family, just, you know, it's something I've been told a lot, but for some reason this weekend, it kind of made sense to me for the first time. So I went in this club that I was performing at. I met this married couple. I met the wife first, very sweet, very nice. You know, I didn't say much other than hi, how you doing? Met the husband. He comes in like a barrel, out, of, like a bullet out of a gun. And all you can talk about is how great his wife was. You meet my wife. She's awesome. She's a bomb. She's a beast. I love my wife. She's crazy. She's so great. She's awesome. I mean, he was t- talking about this woman like she walked on water. That nigga cheated. Okay. Well, okay. Well, let me finish. Let me finish. And so when I was able to get the wife alone, I asked her. I said, let me ask you this question, sister. I said, what is the formula? What, what is it? What what do you have to do to get your man to look at you that way, to speak of you that way, to 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 just tell people that you, you like you walk on water? What is it? What is it? And she leaned over and she said, clear as day, you he has to love you more than you love him. And I've heard that my whole life. For some reason, a particular time, it made sense to me. Bullshit. Okay, let me let me break it down though. Let me break it down though. Let me break it down because when I did my when I started looking at everything around me, and married couples and the ones that I feel that work, the ones that seem like they're evenly yoked, the man raves about the woman and the woman just sits there and basks in it. You never see her going where he goes. Oh my God, my wife's the bomb. You never hear, hear her go. Oh, he's the bomb too. No, she just basking that. When he goes, my wife is so beautiful and she just smiles. She don't say you handsome too. Like. I've noticed with all the the marriages that I've seen, and I look at my grandmother and my grandfather, 62 years, my parents, 54 years, my best friend and her husband, going on 28 years. And it is that same dynamic I've seen where their husbands think they are amazing and they have no problem verbalizing that. And the woman just sits there and bask in it. Like she is not having to reconfirm that to him. It's like, it's something that the minute a man knows that you love him more, or that you're on this mission to love him more or prove your love, it's like that's when they screw up. That's when they feel like I got you and now I can do whatever I want to do to you and you're not going to go anywhere. But if I, but if she doesn't do that and she keeps me on my toes, I'm telling you, I'm looking at the, 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 I'm looking at the married couples I know. And I mean, I know a range. I know millionaires. I know blue collar. I know school teachers. I, I, it's a different range. But it seems like it's the same dynamic that that theory must be true. I wasn't going to give y'all this shit on the second episode, but I'm going to give it to oh, you. Oh, God. Here's okay. All right. point, point, point blank truth. Woman, here's the secret to getting your man. Make that going. man feel that he's protected. He's protected. Make that Isn't man. that a man's so, job? No, it is not a man's job. A man's job supposed to no. present, provide. I can't provide protect. and do nothing for you if I can't come and lay my hand and lay my head in your lap. If I can't come to you with information, if I can't come to you with my sorrow, if I can't come to you with my fears, That's if safe. I can't come to you. That's no, safe. 
there's the shit. Would y'all exactly. y'all don't look at that the same way because what y'all what y'all deem precious don't ain't precious to us. So y'all keep trying to measure up to us like y'all got the same value. Y'all don't. Y'all keep acting no, like those things no. What what matters to us don't matter to the average. Yeah, man. exactly. But y'all don't never value what matters to us. Y'all just think about us protecting y'all. Y'all never protect us. Everything is what, always... how, okay. Wait, 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 wait. So if so, so wait, if wait, I wait, come okay, to okay. my woman, protect if I, my man. If I when come you, to my wife, this is how you protect, protect your man. My man. Please break it down. If I, I got come to, to if I come to if I if I have a if I have a female in my life, yeah, that I trust, yeah, with my fears that I trust with my money that I trust <laughs> with my my family mm-hmm. that I trust with all that vital information I only trust her because I trust that she's going to protect it and by protecting that she's protecting me and most men go outside of their woman more times than not, because they don't feel protected by their woman. They don't feel like their woman cares about those things. They don't feel like they can come to talk to their woman. They don't feel like they can. I'm not making excuses for sucking niggas. But, but, but be clear, I'm not talking about opposite. sucking niggas who do, who do that, who do f boy stuff. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about men, men who are solid, men who are found security within themselves. They mm. want to be protected because y'all don't understand, especially if you're a heterosexual man. In, protected in this, by your woman? Yes. Because who I've else who, who else is gonna protect me? When I go out to the world the black heterosexual men and in, in So does that okay, let me ask you this. Okay, because that that yeah, I protect, protect my you. man. I'm not gonna go out here and fight for you. No, that doesn't mean protect. That's what I'm saying. Protect, protect that's a protect very broad term. Protect my protecting you is the thing. Protecting your woman as they going out. But a level of protecting of your it's some pussy ass niggas out here who you ain't the it. toughest niggas I in the world who can't fight with the lick, but they protect their family. You know how they protect their family? No. They go out, they provide, and they got their family about that. But that's situation. what they say. A but man's job is to protect okay, so and I provide with information, then I have to trust. If you're trusting me to go out and put my life on the line, when I leave here to go to work every day, I just drive in a car accident. But my thing is this, then that goes back to men saying a woman should be his peace. To say I'm supposed to protect you, that can be really what misconstrued. Do you want to what do you want to protect? Of what course, do, you but want the to thing is, if a, if a burglar come in this house and I got to go that's get the fucking the heat, that's the problem. Stuff, but that's just the little stuff. If, 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 if I don't saying feel... the word protect, but that if I don't feel protected, word. if I don't, but we just look at protecting Protecting just, like what? Protecting like protecting everything. you, protecting your feelings, Protect, protecting your money, yes, protecting. Yes. Okay. But a lot of you men marry heifers out the gate that you know ain't even built like that. But we, you, but, you, you marry the looks. But you marry men, the ego stroke of, of men, having that on your arm. But a lot of you men, don't want to ride or die for real. Because how many ride or die heifers are sitting in jail right now for protecting a nigga? But a lot of a lot of men don't know what a ride or die is because they don't <laughs> know where they riding or dying to. They don't know where they going. I'm if I'm not sure the men who you find who are confident and like I said last time, the only men. Who find confidence and, st- and stability within their significant other men who found it in themselves and they found that security to protect that within their women. A lot of men don't find that security in themselves. They don't know where that is. Why you think a nigga like Jay Z, who got everything in the world, could find his security within Beyonce because he trusts that Beyonce. But he cheated on her too. But like I said, he trusts so that Beyonce. So does she protect him? He trusts that Beyonce could protect his most vulnerable moments because to the world he's whole. We don't know Sean. But he so cheated he on needs, her too. So but what that was that glitch? But what I'm saying that the Lloyd, that's He betrayed we, her too. No, he so didn't. What's that, he, oh, didn't. he didn't. Wait a minute. Did cheating is a betrayal. Um, cheating isn't <laughs> cheating is a betrayal. What is cheating? If I put my dick in somebody else, that's no different than washing with, your hand. With 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 changes. <laughs> At, at what point? At what point do we just start looking at stuff and just Michelle. human interaction? I'm scratching my head right now. Michelle. How is it betrayed? So let me ask you this: let me, yeah. We gonna keep it real right now. So mm-hmm. if I cheat, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Not you true. that type of dude that if I cheat, you're you gonna get got, it the same way you looking at it. That it was just me going out here got, and washing my hands. You got hands. witnesses in that tell you I don't look at cheating but as you, you betraying me if okay. you loyal to me. If you, if you're so honest, if, if you're loyal, loyal how am I loyal to you and I'm giving away 
what you think is yours. You're or are you saying that yours. nobody... I don't own your so, body. I can't so, control so, that. So when it comes to a committed relationship, a marriage, mm-hmm. even in that marriage, I am not obligated to be loyal to you from the waist down. Is not that what you're obligated. saying? You, I'm not obligated. You just say it. So I'm in a committed but marriage with you. To me isn't sex. And I'm not loyal. I don't get, my loyalty stops at my loyalty belly button. Loyalty to me isn't sex. Isn't defined It should by be sex. your whole being. Loyalty it shouldn't just be me, what? Loyalty my to me, no, loyalty to what, me what? is loyalty to me is number one, that's your body, that's your temple. I trust that you're gonna make the best judgment to do what you want to do with your temple. And if your temple, if you choose to keep your temple faithful to me, then I <laughs> so trust confused. that. I'm so confused. Yeah, like Okay, look, we'll be back, y'all, with the Coke and Craze show because this just went left. Uh, <laughs> we, I, we hit a nerve, and I, I didn't know it was going to go there, but um, obviously my job as a woman is to protect my man. Well, let me go make sure my dad are going. <laughs> we'll be right back, y'all. <laughs> Clairvoyance Fashion House. We believe that fashion should never compromise comfort or performance. Experience the best of both worlds with our luxurious sportswear and casual clothing. Clairvoyance Fashion House is your go-to casual clothing line for any occasion. Our fashion gurus have meticulously created designs that are not only fashionable but also robust and long-lasting. Embroideries that are elaborate and designs that are wonderfully detailed Our apparel is manufactured from the best fabric materials, which have been carefully chosen for their softness, durability, and quality. Visit cvyshop.com today and use code 6 to get 25% off any item in the store. Again, that website is cvyshop.com, and remember to use promo code 6 that's the number 6 SEC, to get 20% off your first order. Now back to the show. Hey y'all, we are back with the Coke and Craze show, and Craze has gone batshit crazy. Um, <laughs> Because he just informed us in the last... Okay, okay. And th- thank you to our sponsors. Uh, yeah, I know y'all weren't expecting this. But, like, I get what you said. And, and, and me and Misha were talking about... Our wonderful producer was talking about this off the air for a second. You know, we get what you're saying, but maybe it's the word. It's the verbiage, the protect. Because my thing is this. When I think of protect, yes, I'm going to... If my man is going out working hard and he said, baby, pay this bill, then I'm going to protect them. I, I don't know. That word protect. Yeah. And All then right, can I explain you why? a different kind of Negro say your can wife I, or your woman can only can be explain, loyal to her belly can button. Can I explain? And I'm, that's what I'm about to get <laughs> But that's what I'm about to get into. I don't into. know so many niggas cool with that. But that's, what, <laughs> but that's what I'm about to get into. Okay, get into it because you got I'm us break over it here down. I'm a, I'm a, All right. Joke, no, or joke you got E in the corner. He a whole man, and he just playing but, with but his phone right I'm now. Saying. He's so confused. He understands He's so what I'm confused. saying. Let me, let me, <laughs> let me explain it. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so for us, so for us, tough niggas or niggas who establish themselves some sense of whatever, right? right? The one thing that y'all don't understand is that when you y'all fighting the world and you protecting the world and you doing this and you supposed to be this person and you building this rep and all like that. It's extremely long. And it's lonely from a stance that you know that even if you don't feel like this way, you got to be that way. Even mm-hmm. on days where you don't feel like, you know what I mean? Times I don't necessarily feel like getting involved in some shit or I got called into some shit that I ain't want no parts of. Okay. That I was afraid of being a part of, but I couldn't show that. Okay. So that fear, yeah, being an ability to show fear, mm-hmm. become, become a vulnerability. So when you do display that fear to somebody, you're mm-hmm. now entrusting them with that information. So I'm saying, let's use a different word. No, let's because protect. I'm going to use it for me. I want to feel okay, protected. I'm it. not going to okay, be with no so woman your, who can't protect that, that's my That's what makes you feel like, okay, your word is protection. Your yeah. woman is protecting you. Because she I'm going to protect she you. She is putting a layer of protection over you uh, with, with what you tell her, with your vulnerabilities, with your words, with your money, with your with, with, secrets. Okay, yeah. I get it. You know, she's a safe for you. Mm-hmm. And there is the word I'm talking about. You need your woman to be a safe space. That you can be all of that in, in that space, and know that her loyalty is unwavering, that she will hold all of that information like a vault. And protect it. 
you still get back to that same place with the main purpose of a vote to protect yeah to, to protect what's valuable what's valuable to you i get what you're saying but and that's all I and most know. women don't get that that most men and while most men because the ego won't admit it like when we get to the point where we get that woman in our life that makes us feel like that that's because we feel that at no point are they ever going to turn their back on us at no point are they ever But gonna... I think too it's like then why do I meet so many men in marriages where when it seems like it works the man puts her on a pedestal because and treats good. her I like she walks on water though, because we can't put nobody on no pedestal until we secure on our throne. I can't I can't put bring you no can't put you up here and I'm still down here and that shit don't make no sense. But I could put you up here if I'm up here already. I can't put I don't you think so. I don't think but so. You, I look at a married couple right now been together twenty seven years. When they got together she was fresh out of college, didn't have a job yet. He had just gotten into the fire department. He ain't had no damn empire. That fool was making an hourly rate. But now, but 27 years later, but he had her on that pedestal from day but one. But you can't determine what his personal thing is. Every man has their own. Maybe him just getting to the fire department was his job. That was his but career But that's goal. what I'm saying. So you make now it seem like just, it's got to be, I got to exactly, be all up here look, for me to put my no, but what I'm saying, What is I'm your up there? What I'm saying is that that's wherever that is too. It could be so, a young so, dude I just so graduated word high that school. differently because now, now you I'm got cats with, out here thinking he has to be on some no, super saying, elevation. No, I'm saying wherever, that wherever he him. wants to be in that's his life. That's what I'm saying. Life. So Vince, but you say can, that. Yeah, but I, that's what I'm saying. No, a man cannot put no women nowhere above him. So whether if your ass smoking crack and she doing heroin, nigga, you can't put her up here you until she's smoking crack with you. It's the same shit. You can't do nothing. There, like no, there is no man in this world that's going to put a woman above him unless he should kill in his position. She could stand next to him, but he could never put her on a pedestal above him. So if you ever see a putting him on a, if you ever see a man putting a woman on a pedestal, he ain't putting her above her. He's saying she's qualified to stand next to me because I'm secure where I'm at. That he's not putting her on a pedestal, saying, "Oh, she's just so beautiful." He's saying. I earned this. Look at my trophy. Look at my pride because of who I am. You sitting there thinking, oh, she just loves And she that is why she sits back and bask in it because exactly she doesn't. Exactly, because what okay, better trophy now we make, now we yeah, make it so sense. What, now so we what make better trophy sense. is to say, you get married, what better trophy is to say, this is, this is, you think this man is putting you on a pedestal, but yo, this is my wife. She's been in a single parents club. Look at this house. Look at all of this. So why you sitting there thinking, oh, my husband loves me. You not even knowing that he could spend he to kill where he's at, so he to kill enough to say, look at her accomplishment. But if he so, don't, but if, so but if he don't that. have nothing, right? But if he don't have nothing, right? What, what is that? But what if you meet? There's a, and see, it all boils down to the the lack of security that a lot of black men have in themselves. Because I have known men who have accomplished great things, make a whole lot of money, drive hundred thousand dollar cars, and they they literally see a woman that's on their level, or God forbid, above their level, and they freak. Out. And they not because they're not weird. Because they're insecure. There's something but, there's, 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 they, all, they don't know. But I'm saying, so what sets the guys apart that have that or have a woman that may be more educated, make more money, have a bigger house, drive a nicer car, but he sees her as maybe not his equal, but it's his job to protect and provide for her. So what makes that guy different? Because the majority of men freak out if they see women drive a nicer car than them or a nicer okay, house like than them. I so, like, like I said, if I'm in the street, so at every uh-huh. level of my life, if I'm in the street, I'm mm-hmm. doing street shit, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's not conducive for me to necessarily try to shoot for the chick that got the closer job at that time because I can't trust her with the street information that I'm going to give her. She ain't used to this shit, right? So, I know a lot of chicks in jail that were CEOs because they had a thug nigga that had them doing that shit. That washing their money. But, I'm it just does, saying. but it doesn't work long term because mm-hmm. that type of commitment, she's still here and he's still here. So he can't never be there because on life scale, mm-hmm. he can't never truly be who he needs to be with her because he's the student like that college degree. And all that. <laughs> so that's why Ghost and Angela didn't work out. Exactly. Got it. I mean, let's keep it one hundred. If I had to use an example, and that F ended up dead, and, 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 and she ended up dead. But that's what power was about. Because when he was in the street, 
thought you was his equal. Mm. As he accelerated the one out of the street, mm. he accelerated more towards Angela because of her life direction. Mm. That was some. That wasn't oh fuck Tasha. It was I'm going here. You're not going with me. Mm. So when I get here and you're not here with me anymore, mm. I need to go find somebody who's here with me. Oh, so wow. a lot of women don't even understand that. Because you're not even paying your man enough attention to know he's growing. He's doing different shit. So while you still sitting here looking So you think this, even basically that when it all boils down with everything we've just said, it still boils down to the thing that that man has to love her more than she loves him. He has to no, see has her to as such. He, I get, but they're still evenly yoked. But honestly, I've heard it too much in my lifetime. And so many people have said this and I hear it all the time from, and, and I'm like, this has got to be some truth to this theory. Because you can't tell me this is something that people, and people were saying, oh. I love my husband, but we 40 some years in and that man puts me on a pedestal. That man talks about me like I walk on water. That man tells me every day that I'm the greatest wife ever. That I'm the, this, that, and the third. So it's got to be some truth to it because when I look at the track records, every time you see a woman that loves her man, supports her Loving. man, speaks out, you know, constantly supporting him, doing for him, trying to build him up, that's the heifer that always gets shit on. But the chick that's sitting in the cut, making that Negro work to prove himself to her every single damn day, that's the hell for they got the man on lock. And I think it'd be different if I have not seen no, this theory not. proven but it's so not many damn times. Because people, How? Because I got people, people in relationships people, and marriages saying it is. Because people, because relationship and marriages ain't based on no general narrative. All that bullshit people try to tell I'm you to make it seem like it's, it's regular. It's got to be not. some basis to that. It, just chemistry. It just yo. Shit, I that's fuck the case. with I'd you. I've been married. No, look. I've had just, plenty of chemistry. It's just with some like I said. It just I fuck <laughs> with you. I fuck <laughs> with you. And chemistry ain't consistent. Chemistry is consistent along the board. It's some people. I got friends who lifelong friends who mm. I got new friends who closer to me mm. than any female that I ever dated was mm. to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And me I never had a sex through nothing. But mm -hmm. she's closer to me than any female mm -hmm. I ever. I've got put male my friends in. like that. So I've got what I'm like saying that. is that that shit ain't. It's just the <clears> lower <throat> average. You gonna meet the motherfucker that's right. You gonna meet the motherfucker that wrong. And then when it's all said and done, it just how but much. I'm going back to the theory that when I have seen, I'm not being with nobody who I gotta love more than you love me. But Fuck the thing you. is, you don't know Negro. These men it. don't know that. Put, These them, men don't know that. These men don't know that. She not telling him this fool. These men don't know that. They have no idea. Honestly, they are loving their woman more than she loves them. Now, some of them do. Some of them do. You hear them talk. I do all this for her. I do this. I do that. She don't cook. She don't clean. She don't do nothing. But your ass still there, still trying to win her damn love. I've seen it. I've seen it. And then you see the ones who claim, you know, you know, uh, man, this girl ride or die for me, she do anything for me. And that's the same dude to be with a bitch don't do nothing for him because she stroke his ego while the other chick over there holding down the family in the house and protecting him. And he out there cheating on her. And he out there cheating on her because little, little, little heifer down the street, the braid hair in her kitchen, ain't got no but time and opportunity to stroke this Negro, this Negro's ego. So, I mean, it, it can go either way. It can go either way. All I'm saying is, is that it has to be some I truth to it. I cannot relate to none of that shit because I was with what? a woman for 10 years and I was the chick. I was the nigga that was getting cheated on. I was the one who was, I was, but that, but, but your that's ass stayed though, didn't you? But the your reason, ass stayed for let 10 me tell years you, but no, she was but let me tell you, but let me tell down. you, let me tell you why, why I stayed. You loved her more than she No, I didn't. You. I'm I didn't just, say I didn't stay based my on damn theory, I didn't boy. stay based on the premise. I didn't theory. stay based on the premise that I love her more. Than you that. didn't know that. But no, you I'm telling said you, that. I didn't stay based. I know what I felt. I didn't stay based <laughs> on no premise based okay. on I loved her more than I stay based on the premise of if it's based on loyalty. And she if wasn't it's loyal. Be, if it be, I didn't view. I didn't view. So her giving her. I still don't to this day. Everybody. I still don't view her as disloyal. 
Because to the day... Even though she was fucking a gang of niggas behind your back? No. You don't consider her disloyal? No. Please let me find a Negro like this. No. <laughs> no. But I could be out here in these streets. Not that I would, but wow. I would be fe- I would be fearful of getting choked down out of if I cheated on a man profusely that was taking care of me and provided me, and he our, took me back every time. I'm not. Wow. Saying, I'm not Where saying that we at? didn't have our conflict and our and our and our and our disagreement. She was violating but I'm saying the that breach. she was breaching the trust. She was breaching the loyalty. No, and you're she saying, wasn't. So so, and I know I can so tell y'all why she wasn't didn't have to because be I knew who she was when I met her. And so she never, she years. never, she never, ever, she never, ever okay. broke, broke the cord. She never broke the rain. I, I, me, me, I base, I base my loyalty to her mm-hmm. off of the end game. Okay. What did the end game look like? And when I could no longer see the end game, but what was your, my end son game? came and okay. then I couldn't leave at that point because now we but I'm my saying, son. but let me ask you this. Before your son came, what end game were you seeing when this woman could lay in bed with you, say she loved you, and be out there screwing other dudes? What end game were you seeing? What, what was the end game? My outlook on relationships is different. I I, I'm asking you a question. I don't know about the outlook. I'm asking you a question. What was the end game? If it's going to be us in the end, it's going to be us in the end. So you let her get all that out of her system is basically what you're saying. You yeah. was trying to let her get all that out of her system. If it's going to be us in the end, it's going to be us in the end. Like, but in the meantime, you didn't see her going out here. God knows, because people do pillow talk, you know. You don't think she was out there just screwing and not saying shit now, do you? And that's when I didn't Because people see the do pillow game. talk. But that's when, but like I said, I also at the time I was significantly younger. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I still had a lot to learn. That's true. That's true. And and we've all been dumb. Once, yeah, and then <laughs> once I seen that there wasn't the end game was oh she's not going to protect me, I can't trust her to protect me. No way. Right. So now one, once one I that bone good, yeah, she telling all your business. Yeah, dog. Right. Right. Once, <laughs> like, like once she once, leaking like a faucet. Once once I established that that she's not going to protect me, and now with the kid involved, I know you're not going to protect my child. So now it's endeavoring on me to stay in position until I get myself in a better position. That way, when I make my move, mm-hmm. I'm on stable ground to take care of my child. Mm. Rather than making an emotional So what made decision. you finally wake up with your child and realize this ain't love? There is no end game to someone that can continuously go out here and possibly violate the code. Is that what you're saying? Your son made you realize the child. No, my son. I, like I said, that was already a rap before my son. What made me wake up but and you realize was that. No, what and made that's me. different because I don't know. You're different, dog. Because I know so many dudes, man. I got yeah, a lot. You it, know, I got mad male friends. I got mad male friends from all walks of life because I like to listen to the way men talk. I like the way they think, you know, whatever. But you different because the average dude, once he know another penis than been in his woman, it is real hard for him to go back and be like, okay, we good. I don't... I, First of all, I ain't no I, little I, dick. We don't get a phone number because I want all of y'all to call <laughs> in. It could be 1-800, I took the bitch back. <laughs> I, <laughs> I want to meet you Negroes so they can start a fraternity. <laughs> because I don't know. Man, I swear, you be bro, surprised. God, you dip, you yeah, get crazy. I'm, I'm, you different. I'm, all right, you so different. if we you got different. real niggas you out different. here, and you I'm different. gonna be honest, it's, it's different. some real niggas, and it's a couple real niggas. Shout out to nigga Joe Button. Shout out to all the real podcasters out here that that tell the truth. We take it's niggas out here taking more chicks back than chick take niggas back every day. It's more. It's more. It's more niggas taking a chick back with cheating than <laughs> niggas taking niggas back. <laughs> Look at that, I'm producer. It's crazy as you may think. It is. It's true. No, I don't know. Okay, take it back, yes. Now, I will say this. Let me tell you this. The one thing I have noticed, a man will make a good woman go through shit but take a hoe back like that. I have seen that. Now, I have seen that. 
I have seen that with my own eyes where a good woman will get treated like shit, cast aside. She boring. She did. She that. She gained weight. This, that. They'll throw that good woman aside, but they will continuously take a hoe back. Now that I've seen. That I've seen. Now explain that to me. You taking back a heifer for I the streets. It, I said it. But yes. you won't. T- I you said won't. it last episode. Women require what? work, hold it easy. That's that's simple and plain. What? I'm not going to. Women require work, hold it easy. So if I'm not in the mood to work. So well, the bottom line is black women. men don't want to have to work for shit. They want it easy. No, that's any man. That's not a black man thing. The white men choose hoes too. Chinese men choose hoes too. Yeah. Indian men choose hoes too. Caribbean yeah. men choose hoes well, too. You know Everybody man. choose hoes. That's, that's a no Everybody man. choose. That ain't that ain't a wow, black Marty man thing. That's a man children, thing. Right. You put a man. You take you take one man from a from each race through ethnicity and put them in a the room. Well, no. with, so with, men with, period. With, with, with one woman and one hoe. Work. And let's see how many men walk out that room with the woman and how many walk out with the hoe. No, for real, the hoes easy. Most men just want to bust one. They ain't trying to have no conversation. They ain't trying to get to know you. They ain't trying to have nothing with you. They just they just walking around here trying to unload their unload their their balls. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, it used to be a time when men would get to a certain age in their life, a certain maturity. That okay, this is old. But when you got 55 year old men, 65 year old men out here still chasing ass, you 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 know you got gout that and you got on city trends. You know, I mean, but that's what I'm saying. It's like. You know, they talking about ain't no good women out here. When I hear men say that, I'm like, y'all are insane. There only, are good women out shit. here. Niggas say there ain't no good women out here. Well, thank you for saying that. That we agree on like a motherfucker. Okay, we'll be right back, y'all. We're going to wrap this baby up with the Coke and Cray show. Woo, we done got heated up in here. <laughs> you want to take a sip of your do say? I feel you might be a little heated. We'll be right back, y'all. <laughs> That's bold, spicy, and everything in between. Look no, Look no further than the What the Sh podcast, hosted by me, Devious, and Mischievous. We're going to keep you on the edge of your seat every episode, every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcast. And, and if you're feeling a little, little risque, give us a touch on Pornhub. We're talking taboo topics, highlighting talented adult creators, and bringing you the rawest, most uncensored content out there. So don't settle for less. Join us on the Six Sex Media Network for sex, jokes, and unadulterated fun. Hey, y'all, we back. I'm sorry, I'm so busy texting. Um, you know, it's funny, we were sitting up here during the break, and I ain't even realized that these chairs opened up and have whole little compartments on both sides. I didn't know. Kids clearly did. I know the kids did. Y'all can tell this is my house. Yes, I have children. I have one child, but he has friends. Uh, <laughs> but hey, but you know, um, this has been a very interesting show, but I love it because it shows the dynamic of the Cocaine Craze show, that we can be two very different individuals, but in the end, we always come to a common understanding. and We get each other, even mm-hmm. though we disagree like a motherfucker. But you know, bless your heart. I ain't gonna send you a therapist. <laughs> I'm gonna recommend you to a therapist. But um, ooh, child. So, oh God, where are we gonna the go? The moral of this story is the moral of today's episode is what? Um, we were started with some celebrity shit. We were started at. We were started. I'm sorry, we... I've been drinking, y'all. Where we started? Oh God. Where we started? See, his cup is way bigger than mine right now. <laughs> um, uh, where we start? What topic we started off? We started that? off with you know pop, you know the popular. The, oh, did we talk about the football player that called it that, that said the football player had a big dick? Oh, she just wanted to smash. Well, that was code for white women to get ready. That's that's what she was sitting out. She was sending out the hootie hoo to all the white women. And oh, that's what that. That's the, that, that was that was a cat. That, that oh, was that, that really that was, was that was her yo. sliding for all the white women to know this black ball player is ready for the picking. That's all. That Do you was think a, you took it in. Of course he did. He's a black ball player. <laughs> they got to take down a few snow bunnies. They won't even get their jersey back. <laughs> you forget I was married to one. Uh, no point, bro. They on you, bro. Ain't no I'm more scary saying, than a white woman, bro. Oh, you know, before we get out of here, you know, let me ask. No, I ain't even going to open up that can of worms with you. What? Ooh. What? 
know, you know, uh, a lot of the states are passing this ban on trans uh, men com- competing in Can women's I stand sports. Up and take a bow? We're gonna get. Canceled. I support that hundred percent. I don't even know why. You know, I have to be so careful because the last time I said it's it nothing wrong with. They tried were to we about to stay in and to offend anybody? It's, it's just not, unfair but to I have you biological have men competing against women in sport, especially anything mm-hmm. physical. I don't care. Like all of that stuff, just whatever you want to call yourself. When if you were physically born with my genetic. You should not be competing against any woman in any physical sport. That's it. Yeah. I don't care what you want to call yourself. Because it was like that one. You call yourself a horse, you're going to go race in the Kentucky tra- Derby with you. woman that, that was a guy who wasn't that great in swimming, but when mm-hmm. he became a woman and competed against women, he was dusting these women, but he also was like 6'6 with an arm span of like 400 inches. Like he was getting a lead on them. And they thought that was fair. That wasn't fair. <laughs> That's not fair. It's actually bullying. It's it's not fair. But, you know, I get what Brittany was saying. But, Brittany, when they let you in the NBA and you can play next to LeBron. If LeBron, if, if LeBron identified as a woman. And when it played next the WNBA. Season, next season, that I'm a woman. And I'm going to go play in the WNBA. Oh, that would be an Advantage. <laughs> they wouldn't even have to put nobody else out there with them. Hey, LeBron, nope. tip the ball Take off to your throat right. and just go ahead and. You know, it'd be like that scene in Love and Basketball. Give the ball to Monica. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they wouldn't even need no other team. It'd just be LeBron. Yeah, He'll tip the ball off, LeBron. catch it, and throw. Bring it down the court. He'll play defense with all and five I know, people. And the thing is, I'm not saying that if you identify as a woman, and I, I, I'm here for it. I, I, I've got transgender friends. You know, Flame Monroe is one of my closest friends. I, I I don't have a problem with that, you know. But I do think it's kind of jacked up I say that you're a whole dude and you're like competing against women who train their whole lives. And just because you have a more strength and maybe more agility or just genetically predisposed to be stronger and faster. And then you go out here and just dust somebody or beat up, beat, beat somebody who's been training their whole life to compete against people like them it's it's Since really look, unfair look, look, look. It's like kind of unfair. let's end the show like this I support you motherfuckers when I see one of you motherfuckers go identify as a horse and race in the Kentucky Derby oh my god we're gonna get cancelled okay you know what um I, what? I, get I get it oh god I support one is one of I'm not being I'm not being disrespectful I'm telling you I would support anybody anybody who wants to go compete in Fourth with opposite sex, if you identify as a horse first and then go race in the Kentucky Derby, you could come back, you could come back and compete against any sport against anybody you want. But first you have to identify as a horse, go race in the Kentucky Derby. So do you think you that they back. would let trans men in the NFL and trans men in the NBA? You think it would go the exact same way? Like you think it would go the you know, because right now it's more so about trans men, trans, trans women. Uh, competing against uh, genetically born women, and you know mm. we've not talked Ain't about a trans women in the world. The men, a are, trans man, trans which men, a woman going to a man. Yeah, it's a woman going to a man. Yeah. So, but um, she, I mean, they are still in a woman's body. So. They so, if, would they have the same rights as the trans women are fighting for? Hell if a no. trans man wanted to play in the NFL, Could if a trans the, man a wanted to compete in the Olympics under male sports, would they give them the same respect and the same uh, liberties as they're trying to do the other way around? That's my only question. Because I haven't seen that, have you? I haven't seen no woman trying to do, I mean, no, no trans woman trying to do that. I haven't seen no one, no trans, trans woman trying to go play. I mean, a trans, trans man. I'm working with him, y'all. Bear with me. I'm, I haven't seen a trans man trying, trying to go compete in right. And, and, and I said, but if that happens, will they get the same fight as the trans woman? Like, I because I, I, I'm just curious. If Brittany Griner woke up tomorrow and decided I want to play where I feel I most relate, I want to play for the NBA. Will they open that door for her? Or they'll be like, no, it's no, a guy be. thing. 
No, but you gonna let a six foot six weed. white man with titties go swim with women who are like five four and one hundred twenty pounds and think that's equal? You said that. You said the key word. What white man? I did. I said white. My you bad. Said six foot four white man. But I'm saying that that's what he was, and he's out there competing against what you know these women who are swimmers who trained their whole life. Woman's five six and maybe a hundred and two pounds. Didn't. If his name was Jamal, he wouldn't been able to do that shit. Oh my god, I can't with you right now. But I'm just go curious. race a horse, come back and holler at me. The views of Craze are not necessarily the views of Coca Brown. I'm just here. I'm just saying, if anybody could identify as anything they want, that's true. Identify as a horse. True. They had a they had a woman that was identifying as a turtle. They had the dude that identified as a oh, baby. Remember the, remember the white chick that said she was black. Yeah, she identified as black. So uh-huh. if anybody could identify with whatever they want and you want to compete in sports, go identify as a horse and then go race in the Kentucky Derby, then come back oh my God. and let's have this discussion. Okay. All right, y'all. The we cool see y'all next, next week, man. <laughs> he got me up here like, I'm so scared to say something because they came for me last time. I'm still trying to get, ooh. No. So look, look here. We I did not. We love everybody. I love want, everybody. That's want, the thing. I love everybody. We want everybody. everybody to be happy. I want everybody to love be happy. Love who you love. Be comfortable in your own skin. But I also have learned you have to be very, 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 very careful what you say. And so on that note. <laughs> and mind your business and pay your taxes, cuz. Yes. And if you haven't paid on April, in, in, in April, you're late and the penalties will be steep. But it's okay. You get you a good tax attorney. All right, y'all. It's been great. Thank y'all for tuning in to the Coca and Craze Show. We'll be back on another episode. And I know that you want to talk about parenting. You know, and we're gonna come back yeah, and we're gonna talk about that because talk about these badass kids next episode. Oh, let's get yeah, into these get new into kids it. that are fighting teachers. Yep. We'll be talking about this on the next and one. And I got some great punishment ideas about 1900 to 1990. No. Okay. Yes, and we just got free. Y'all have a wonderful night. We'll see you later. Nah, nah, it's been a minute since I wild out on the Indians. Ain't been chilling, I've been grinding, I've been running to the money, y'all. My time expensive, bring a budget, we can kick it. Ain't no money, ain't my business. I'm just married to the millions. My palm itching, this paper too addicted. Gotta get it by any means. Got a scheme, then I'm with it. Yeah, I gotta have it. Yeah, I got some habits, bags bending, bad. Oops, if in the breeze grabbing, I'ma see no holding, see no throwing.